What's happening there, Denise? Jean, Lulu, Rebecca, Cindy. Well, look at there, Trina. Just put the topper on the cake. Thank you, Trina. Standing stones. Hello to everybody. Welcome, Henry. Uh, let's see. Everybody's starting to tune in. Val. Barb. Hey, Barb. I've got something uh, that just joined the studio right there. Yeah, I wanted to say hello to you. So welcome, everybody. So let's see here. Don't forget, ladies and gentlemen, I just want to say this uh, episode is brought to you by, yes, once again, thank you, uh, USCCA. If you are traveling, if you do not know your laws about concealed carry, make sure and go out and check out your uh, state laws in your reciprocal states. It is free. Yes, thank you, USCCA. Our partnership I'm from uh, our bottom of our hearts, from the Bigfoot Outlaw family, we say thank you. Uh, the link will be in our comments and also underneath our YouTube channel. So thank you very much. Make sure to check them out, ladies and gentlemen. Tracy, what's going on? Hey, Grizz, I am doing well, buddy. How about you? Oh, I can't complain. Can't complain at all. So uh, I got my other computer system delivered today. So I got a whole new setup in the studio all the way around. Uh, now I've been working on cable management and I've got another uh, doll that showed up. Um, do, 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 do. Yeah. So uh, now it's an alien doll with Bigfoot. So yes. <laughs> Interesting, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. Let me yeah. adjust my mic here a little bit. Kind of <laughs> hit my uh, settings a little bit. Does it, do I sound okay? Yeah. Yeah. No, man. You sound, you sound great, buddy. Buddy. Yeah. So, uh, what's going on with you? Anything new? Hey, uh, no, I, uh, uh, for outside of paranormal stuff, I, I got a, uh, bit of a music thing today, a contract to, uh, get promoted. So hopefully, uh, you'll be seeing more of the music in, in more places. So that's good. Um, for those of you, uh, joining in to watch Conjure Quest, uh, paranormal, unfortunately they had some technical bugs, difficulties, yeah. so they will not yes, be they did. Uh, but we did get somebody else on. He's been on before, uh, Sharon, uh, Sharon Ner Paranormal, uh, Lou. He's, he's a great guy. He's, uh, they've been really super busy. And if you wanted Grizz, you can bring him on. Yeah, come on down, Lou. Welcome back. Nice to have you. Hey, great to be here. Thanks. Absolutely. So introduce yourself once again to everybody who you are. Well, my name is Lou. Last name is Ross Vinny. Uh, I'm the founder of Charon Paranormal. Um, Charon is the name of the fiery minute takes you across the river Styx. Um, in real life, I'm a 911 worker and just been doing investigations month after month. I try to book one for every month and we've been going steady since I reformed the group. Oh, that's awesome. Great, great. Well, first of all, happy birthday to, uh, to Mia. Oh, thank you so much. <laughs> <laughs> I'll, let, I'll, I'll let her know. I'll let her know. Yeah, She'll be more than dog. happy. That's, that's one pretty dog, man. Uh, she she's a princess and she's every bit the definition of a diva trust me when i tell you that but she's got a special place in my heart she came into my life at the uh best time that i needed something like that and i got her from a wonderful woman if i can just plug this in uh south jersey her name is joanne that demon or dimon d-i-m-o-n and she runs akita bear um rescue and that's all oh. she does she's been rescuing akitas for probably the last 30, 40 years. So I got oh, Mia awesome. back at the end of 2012, going into 2013 with uh, with another Akita, but he since has passed on. Okay, okay. Now I just wanted to throw that out there. So how you been, man? How's, how's everything going? I've been good. I've been really good. And congrats on that contract. I, I wish you all the best, man. No, uh, hey, thank hey. you. It might, it might go somewhere, it might not, whatever. I just, I, it's I'll be positive. So. I, and, and you know, and you know, I'm gonna hit you up for meet and greet. Uh, you know, passes when you when you hit it big, man. I'll be backstage. Yeah. I, just, I just hope someone buys the songs. To be honest with you, <laughs> no, but they're buying it. They're out there. You know, they're out there. Oh yeah. So, yeah. so how? Uh, yeah, we've, been, we've been hitting investigations month after month. It's been going pretty well. Yeah, you just did one a couple of days ago, right? We did one a couple of days out in Nancy Glow, Pennsylvania. It was called the uh, Liberty Theater. It's from the early 1800s. It was a pretty cool place. Pretty rainy night, so that kind of led to, uh, I guess, the mood or the atmosphere. It was pretty cool. Oh, I like the way you said the mood. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, isn't, isn't it? I mean, you know, we're, we're all in this. We want to be like scientific or we want to be as honest and, uh, you know, logical and organic. But come on, 
we all like the creepy, right? So when you got thunder and lightning out there and it's beating down on a roof that's a couple hundred years old, it lends to it. Oh, oh yeah. yes, it does. Absolutely. It does. <laughs> what, uh, what, what did you, uh, anything particular you found that night? The only thing at that theater, and the theater's great, and the people that run it are amazing. Um, and I guess I'll give a little shout to Lindsay, Angel, uh, Brian, and Michaela. They're four amazing people, and they're doing so much for that place. So if anybody wants to go investigate that place, help them out because they need a lot of renovation in the building and support them in that way. And those four people I just mentioned, they're awesome to deal with. They're honest. They're sincere, great ethics, and they have great investigating skills. Um, we had a couple odd things happen as we were setting up and then a couple odd things when we started, but you know, the traditional sitting there trying to do things, nothing really was going on. doesn't mean anything, or it doesn't mean that nothing's going on there. Just, it wasn't happening that night for us, but we'll definitely do it right. again. I usually try to do a place a couple times to get the most out of it that I can. So, but I kind of feel like you go into their house. They don't know you. You don't know them. I think you got to build a rapport. So like I've been to other places where the first couple of times wasn't that great. And then you go in a few more times and then all of a sudden all kinds of things are going on. So uh, walk us through what, what you take equipment wise. And if there's any special things that you guys do during the, the hunts that, that is uh, significant with your team. So well, what I like to do is have absolutely no information about the paranormal with the location. I'm cool with the history. I'm cool with the owners. I'm cool like, you know, the town, like the one we just did, Nanny Glow, that was like a coal mining town. But me and my group, I don't want anybody to do any research on paranormal, because like we talked about before, you know, that's gonna kind of make it prejudice their bias. So if somebody says on any location, you know, that's in the corner, that's where they see the woman in a white dress, then all night long, everybody's gonna be thinking they see the woman in a white dress. So I like going in cold without anything. Um, I always, respect the location owners or the people that are managing. And I ask them the do's and don'ts. I'm in the, I like Ouija boards, dowsing rods, all kinds of things like that. Some places don't want the Ouija board used. Some places are okay with it. So depending on the location, I abide by their rules. Um, I use, you know, audio recorders, video cameras, dowsing rod, Ouija board. Um, I just saw something. I wish I could remember this lady's name. She's got a Facebook page. She follows me. I follow her. And she had a cool idea. She got a bunch of bells and she just put them like in a circle. So I guess, you know, if you're asking for a sign, see if you can ring the bell. So what I did is I took it a step further. I got these bells with a nice stand and then I put a cat ball underneath all of the bells. So unfortunately, I haven't had anything great happen yet. But so I use bells, cat balls, which the cat balls, I think, are amazing because it, it, they're low tech and in my opinion, there's no real interference. Something has to physically touch that thing for it to go off. Whereas right. like you have other things like an EMF detector or a REM pod or things like that. If somebody's phone is on with Wi-Fi, it's going to set it off. If people have walkie talkies, it's going to set it off. So it's kind of hard to isolate equipment and completely have a place, I guess, sometimes free of that interference. Um, so we try to stay pretty low tech and old school and i don't use spirit boxes or anything like that i'll use an am radio like old school put it on a station where there is no station you know with the nine volt battery um keep it down low you'll hear the white noise and sometimes you get some things come through that which the weirdest thing i ever got through that am radio was um last year we did the conjuring house and we were in there for 12 14 hours had cameras all over the place um and then we all crashed upstairs in the bedroom for a couple hours and while the cameras were rolling and the um, radio was on, I caught some muffled voices. But then all of a sudden, a song started playing on the radio, which I thought was really funny. And it was Pat Benatar's Treat Me Right. I have no <laughs> idea where that came from. So I don't know if the spirits were saying, hey, treat us right or what was going on. But it played That's for funny. a couple of seconds and then it went off. Um, yeah. So it's kind of neat. Yeah. I thought you were going to say hit me with the best shot. No, 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 no. That would have been cool, too. Anything would have been neat. Um, and then really it, the conjuring house was cool. The only like physical thing I had happen there was in the one bedroom. Um, I kind of crawled up into this little chair because um, I let the rest of the members have the bed. So I figured, you know, when you're like, uh, I don't want to say the boss, but when you're like the founder or whatever, you take like the hard floors of the sofa, you let the members have the good spots. Right. Yeah. So at one point it felt like something was standing next to me, like about three feet in height. And I was tired. Um, and I just kind of woke up and I was like, look, if, if there's something here, and you want to make yourself known, you want to manifest, whatever it is you want to do, go ahead. I'm cool with it. But if you don't, I'm going back to sleep because I got like a four hour ride home in the morning. And then I just went back under my sleeping bag and like probably within 15, 20 minutes, I felt me in the chair 
move about three to four inches in one direction. And I was like, okay, that to me is like a sign you want to maybe have some conversation. And then one of the closet doors in the bedroom started to kind of open a little bit. That was pretty much it. It was cool. I, I do have a question for you. So when you go to locations, right, how do you talk to people about Ouija boards? Well, I, I just asked the location owners with the do's and don'ts, and I go, is it okay if I do like a Ouija board session, like I use a Ouija board in your location? And usually some people will give me, yes, as long as you know how to open and close it, or they'll say, we're not too fond of them, um, so we prefer you not to, which is cool. Like I said, I, I'm, you know, it's not my place. And I want to be asked back and I want to give the people um, uh, like a good representation of my group. So we're going to follow their rules and regulations. It might, you know, I might think some of the rules and regulations, I don't know, I might think they're silly or a little over the top, but again, it's not my place. So I'm going to follow, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll do or not do what they ask me. But do the one thing we do is ask you, what are the Ouija boards? And Have they ever asked me? No, I've never had anybody want the Ouija board explained because I guess pretty much at all these locations, they're pretty familiar with everything so far. I think the one thing that kind of is a little odd with the Ouija boards or any kind of medium device like that is a lot of times they have the information that's on either the Internet or TV. So it's usually Got kind of slighted in, in one way or the other. Business. That's fast. So. Are easy and, and, to it, use and then the only other thing I like to do is for some reason, my group got into when we do a location, we take a picture with this weird plastic light up pumpkin and the Ouija board. So the places, even if they don't want us to use it, which is cool, I ask them if, if I can at least take a picture with it. And everybody says, yeah, you can take a picture in front of the location with it. So it's pretty cool. And again, messing with the Ouija board for probably over 30 years. The only place I ever had like a real positive reaction or interaction was in Berks County in Pennsylvania at a place called Britain Lodge. And the owner there, her name is Eileen. And if you guys can go support her, she's amazing. And I just found out that she needs repairs on the roof. It's a mansion that's over 300 some years old. It's oh, the wow. mansion where I got that picture. Yeah, it's really neat. Like the front of the building, 1700, the center part's 18 and the back end is 1900. And then if you're in a beer and good bar food, her boys tacked on a building on the side because now they have a microbrew growing there. So you can go during the day, you know, have some snacks, whatever, and then investigate I'm at night. Um, I'm going. <laughs> but the only, so that's the place where I got that picture on my web page or on a Facebook page. If you see it, it's a French door and there happens to be a face with an upper part of a body in it. And I got that mm -hmm. off of um, a camera that was set um, in the lobby and that rolled the whole night. And that, that, that image in that, in the, in the door was there for about a good 20 minutes, 25 minutes, and then it was gone. But Eileen and I did a Ouija board one night and I don't know. And like I said, last time when I do a Ouija board, I don't allow everybody to put all their hands on it because I believe there's a psychological component to the Ouija board, just like there is a lot of psychological component to paranormal investigating. So usually it's just my two fingers and somebody else. And then we put flashlights all the way around so that you can see light almost underneath our fingers. Um, and we're just sitting there and the room was kind of cool, no big deal. And all of a sudden the planchette moved up and to the left about an inch and three quarters. And Eileen and I just looked at each other like, did you do that? And I was like, I didn't do anything, but uh -huh. You know, nothing bad happened. Nobody was possessed. No, nope, nobody got attached. You know, I, I know, like we joked last time, I didn't find the portal to hell. I didn't open Pandora's box. Nothing happened, and that was just it. So it was. I don't know if it sounds weird with a Ouija board, but it was actually a pleasurable experience that something politely interacted with us. And that's right. the only time I've ever had that. The only other, well, another time was in Atlantic City Lighthouse where. Me and one of the other members was doing a Ouija board, but the rest of the members were like, that thing looks like it's trying to move on its own. And it seemed like there was a little bit of a, 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 a pull or a tug on the planchette. So that's another good place. If anybody wants to go to a good place with a guy that runs it really well, his name's Milt, and it's Atlantic City uh, Lighthouse, Epsican Lighthouse. It's a great place. Oh, awesome. So I... I the Grizzly and I, or for myself anyway, we had we had a guest on last week that was talking about the Ouija board. He brought something to light for me. I'm not sure about Grizz, but for me, and Grizz probably already knew it. Uh, <clears throat> the Ouija board, he explained it as it's just another uh, avenue to converse with the another spirit. Another tool. Just like a right. spirit box, just like any other tool. Yeah, yeah. And I was like, wow, well, well, I never really even thought about that because well, – 
as you well, stated earlier, it gets a bad rep. Well, dowsing rods, that's a device like acting like a medium, a pendulum, you're acting like a medium. And think about it when you talk about sciences and stuff, right? So as soon as you sit down and everybody's got their video cameras out, their recorders, and you got devices all over the place, and as soon as you sit down and you're like, hey, if there's any spirits, ghosts, entities, anything in this room that would like to communicate us, we invite you to communicate with us. We mean you no harm, as well as we will not accept any harm from you. So if you want to interact with us, come on down. You don't think that's like, you know, being a seance, having a seance or trying to open some form of communicate. All of it is, you yeah. know what I mean? And, and I don't think, correct. you know, I don't think there's that whole you have to either invite them or not. And what we have found in my group is when we show up, we get the the, the guy, uh, the tour. So, you know, like me, because I'm a klutz, so I don't fall down a flight of steps or through a floor. We always get the, uh, you know, lights on and let's see where we're going, where we can't go. Then we set up all the equipment Then usually we ground by having a snack, sit down and eat something. And then we kind of figure out where we want to start. But a lot of times when we start, we don't actively um, I, I don't we don't actively ghost hunt or ghost chase or any of that. We just sit down, and have some conversation. A lot of times, most of the times things will start to happen without us actively pursuing anything, because I think um, if there's something there and they want to hang out or communicate with you, they're going to let themselves know. And the last couple of places we did, I actually got really positive responses in asking if you're really sick and tired of people asking you the same questions over and over again, and you'd like a break, I'll make an agreement with you. If you give me a sign, I will leave this room and not come in the rest of the night. And within seconds, I get a positive sign. And I keep my word. We don't go back in that area or that room for the rest of the night. Uh, oh, yeah. Yeah. Um, so I, I want to go back to the Conjuring House just real quick. The uh, the well in the basement. There's a well, well in we, the basement, right? Right. We did a seance right next to the well. How, how did that go? Any Anything? Didn't really get anything. And again, like I'm saying, I mean, just because you go to a place doesn't mean it's active. Or it's not active. It's just, you know, it's hit or miss. You know, it's like fishing. You go fishing. You either, you know, you drop the hook in the water and you get absolutely nothing. Or before you even drop the, the, the hook in the water, you know, they're jumping in your boat. And we, we've been places where we didn't even start setting the equipment up. And you start hearing footsteps or things get knocked down or, you know, just things going off. I mean, the Conjuring House was nice. Um, I, you know, I tell anybody to go check it out. And the people that were there. Um, the two volunteers, they were super cool. Um, Did, I like it. While you were there, and we've had some people on that, that have talked about outside the Conjuring House, things that go on in the woods. Did you guys, I know you guys were in the house most of the time. Did you happen to talk to anyone yeah, we, we, about it? Or? We walked around outside in the woods. We walked around. You know, we went over the spots where they said that the uh, the owner had brought in the uh, ground penetrating ra radar. And, um, you know, she had found her. It was revealed there that there were voids. So the, their belief was that they thought there were either, either Revolutionary War, Civil War, or even uh, Native Indians, you know, buried there. So I think now you're allowed to, they do where you can camp in a tent over those areas. Um, we walked around. I mean, again, it was, it was, um, it was cool. It was nice. Where the location is, it's beautiful, but we didn't really, you know, see anything. And, so and the I, reason I felt, I, go ahead. The sorry. Reason I keep bringing it up was as a, you know, Conjuring House is a pretty famous house and, and it's cool that you guys went there. Uh, somebody else had discussed, and uh, Greg, correct me if I'm wrong. Someone else had discussed uh, possibly seeing Bigfoot out there. I think that was like now, one interactions of with uh, possibly Bigfoot, uh, rocks being thrown at them, uh, wood knocks, tree knocks in the wood line, and so yeah. So there was other activity, absolutely, or phenomenon. Yes, it seems to be a hotbed, hotbed for a paranormal activity. Uh, obviously, from not just from the conjuring house itself but outside as well um, well you, you got so much history in new england so many things happen there i mean so many battles and so many different things so yeah i think anywhere you go that's that's pretty loaded up with history you're going to have something going on now now you're in pennsylvania correct correct okay have, have uh have you ever have you gone to the uh shoot Daniel Class has the Hinsdale house that's in buffalo that's not i don't know how far buffalo is from me but i know but you're buffalo. into that yeah, Buffalo is not that far. I've, I've not gone there. So. That would be uh, something I would suggest to you, too. That would be a good one for you guys. Uh, I've always looked at his uh, Facebook page and other people's Facebook pages that, that go to different places. that And that seems to be a, a haven for uh, paranormal activity, too. Just throwing that out there for you. Um, cool. Now, what 
so to get back into the the paranormal stuff uh the franklin county jail you guys did the franklin county jail not too long ago right we did that that was an amazing place um the people that were there the volunteers the caretakers they were again amazing so i i think i've been fortunate everywhere i've gone the location owners or sponsors they've just been super nice genuine people what uh what type of evidence did you pick up there so at the so at the franklin county jail it's a pretty big place it's a little bit deceiving for the outside but once you get into it, it's pretty big and i guess like the preservation uh, society they have has done a, an amazing job of keeping that place pretty pretty well taken care of um so we got some noise i got a video of you know i did the comment i asked hey can you make a noise and we got a noise um but where we got a lot of um, activity was downstairs they call it in the dungeons which you would call it like you know solitary confinement or the hole so in one of the rooms i went in the room and the one member in our group she had a uh, a thermal camera and at one point she was saying well wow, the temperature in the room and you personally the room went from 70 degrees down to 50 degrees and it it felt weird like a swirl of cold air around me so and you got to remember i'm in a basement in a solid concrete like vault so not really i would think room for drafts or things like that um had the had the um um the cat ball on the floor and this particular cell room was a little creepy because the the door to the cell it's like three four inches thick right we're talking about the 1800s in the solitary confinement and the story with that was there were all these gouges in the door and apparently the guy that was down there would scream all night long and he would complain about being bit by rats and he would scratch at the door trying to get out well he ended up scratching so much that all of his fingernails were pulled out and then what the what the guy did he took the fingernails he sharpened them on the door and then he completed suicide by opening his wrists in that no, cell no. yeah mm. right so <laughs> i'm in the cell and i gave the guy the agreement because nothing's really happened and i was like look i understand the history behind what happened in here and if you don't want to interact with somebody and you know you've had enough of people asking you questions or you just want to be left alone just give me a sign and probably 10, 15 seconds, the ball went off. And I was cool when I left that cell, no big deal. The cell next to it, however, I went in there and I got pretty overcome as though like I felt like I was gonna you know, vomit throw all over the place. I mean, it just hit me really hard. And the same thing again, the cold air was swirling all the way around. And the one member, Deanna, she had the thermal camera and she's like, yeah, the temperature's like really dropping steady. Um, and I had placed a cap ball down on a mat. They had like a simulation there. They had like a bucket that was their indoor plumbing, right? And then they had the, the the canvas thrown over like a bed of hay. That's what they got to sleep on. And I and I was about to say, hey, there's a cat ball on the floor. If you guys want to interact with us, it's there. If you want me to leave, also light that up and I'll get out of your hair. And I said, if it, if you're the guy from the next cell over, I'm not violating our agreement. I don't know that you're going back and forth. But again, if you want me out of here and to leave this cell alone, I'll do that. So sure as anything, as soon as I said that, it went off. And then, you know, I, I hung out for a few more seconds, gathered the equipment and I left. But as soon as I got out of that cell, I didn't feel as though I was going to get sick anymore. And then wow. again, and then once I left the cell, she had the thermal camera in there. The temperature kind of came back, you know, what would have been appropriate. So it wasn't, there wasn't a big drop. Hmm. And that place also has like a good rich history with the Underground Railroad. They actually have section in there where, um, uh, where the underground railroad was used, where the slaves that fled from the south, where they would hide them. And the one interesting thing is they had a fake fireplace with these metal irons inside. So again, um, 1800s, right? You got to keep men and women separate, right? You know, stuff like that. So the women and the children were in this one cell room where there was a hole in the wall where they would put a piece of furniture in front of. So you wouldn't know that that was there. But the men, the men, they put them in this fake fireplace and the the men would stand on these irons inside the fireplace. So if somebody came along, they wouldn't think to look in the fireplace. And then they had like a little fire going inside. So they would just think it was a regular fireplace. So I thought that was kind of neat. Yeah, that, that's actually interesting. It is interesting, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's genius. Hiding from that. Now you never think that. You know, yeah, Chris, yeah. something you and I've never talked about, I don't think, is uh, the temperature stuff. You ever been in a room where it just got so freezing? Oh, that yes. Holy cow. Yeah. I mean, when you're sitting there and all of a sudden it's 87 degrees, it drops down to 67. That's strange. Yeah. Yeah. I've, I've, I've never, I've never really experienced the cold part of it. You know, it's 
That'd, that'd probably freak me out. <laughs> have you ever have you ever been in a room or an area where it's already dark to begin with, but yes. the room becomes even darker in a certain part of that room? Oh yes. Yep. I, 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 yeah, I think that's pretty cool as well. So. Yeah, that, that just means that there's something in there. Yeah. You know? To yeah. me, anyway, it's making it darker than another shadow or something. That's right. <laughs> well, well that, that I mean, that's what we want, right? We want the evidence. We want things to, to happen to us, which I still think it's funny when people ask for something to happen. It happens. Why they, why they go running out screaming like you asked for it. <laughs> and especially if you're paying at the location, get your money's worth. Don't run out of room. Stay there. And just because something moves or makes a noise or gets thrown or pokes you doesn't mean it's evil. It doesn't mean it's bad. It's just their way of communicating with you. You know, I mean, unless something, you know, like a brick levitates and hits you in the head, maybe that's a whole different story. So, <laughs> so I don't know. Maybe, maybe you're in a rough part of town and those ghosts are a little bit, you know, on, on the rough side. Huh. Yeah. I, uh, there's a mansion in Jerseyville that had the railroad uh, in it as well, right in the basement. And there was a, a hidden part in the wall in the basement. It just opened up to a round area and just carved seats and in, in rock and underneath floorboards and all that stuff and there's just a you know I, I never even thought about the potential that that could have been a fireplace right in front of it i never right. even thought about that because it's a perfect spot for it uh there's Are actually people? a fireplace above it uh on right. the next floor so you got your flu already there right I, so, I think people were ingenious back then the way they would you know if they needed to hide or smuggle or do whatever it is they needed to do they were pretty ingenious how they did that yeah, all so. in Illinois, we got there's a bunch of uh, underground railroad stuff here on different houses and private private properties and stuff like that. Big tunnels. Oh my gosh, mm -hmm. it's a, uh, it's amazing around here how, how it's like. You ever been in an uh, underground railroad uh, spot, Grizz? No. So we had them a, a lot over in New Albany, right, where they would bring them across the river and on the banks and through the houses that were on the river. But no, I never been actually through a tunnel. No, that would be interesting. It is. It's it's a it's pretty cool, man. It's a, you're like you know they they took a lot of time to get that stuff built to yeah. help those people get through. That that's awesome that that they were able to do that. Um, so I didn't know, Grizz. I, I sent you a couple attachments. Yes, I, you uh, might absolutely. be able to pull a couple of them up and, and, sure. and walk, Luke can walk us through what what he's got there. All right, here. Let me some of them are videos. Screens. I think it's one picture. All right, uh, we'll just start with number one. And uh, we'll bring it up here, ladies and gentlemen. And action. We'll let him explain here. <laughs> okay, so that is like a, a, a snip or whatever you want to call it off of a video. And that was really cool because, again, one of our members, Deanna, caught that. And what I always tell people when you review evidence, it's really good to let other people review what you have reviewed because sometimes you can miss something or everybody that's done this for a little bit you know what it's like like um the past week or you know when we did um the theater what did i have i think i had between 12 and 14 different types of cameras all over the place filming the whole night and we were there overnight so it takes a while to review all that video and you can miss stuff you get tired or you don't see it but that was in the enfield um demon demon house up in connecticut and we were in another we were in a one bedroom and there was a motion light, there was a camera in the hallway and it kept getting tripped and we didn't know why it kept getting tripped. You know, I kept walking out in the hall to see what was going on. I didn't pick anything up um, other than what that is. And it's kind of weird. I don't know if anybody else could throw out a suggestion, but if you look in that blue circle, I, I don't want to use the word orbs, but it looks like something coming together or something's there. So I don't know yeah, it does. if that yeah so i don't know if that was the thing that was moving up and down the hallway triggering mm -hmm. the motion lights and then at the end of that hallway there's a set of steps that go downstairs and i had a camera set up at the bottom of those steps and for and again we were there the whole night i think we were there from seven i think we were there like from seven to seven in the morning or 6 p.m something like that but we were there all night long um and where the one camera was set up downstairs at the bottom of the steps all night long it was great but then when we all decided to bed down for a couple hours, I stayed in the um, the living room on the sofa right by that doorway. And then all of a sudden the camera went weird. So it would get staticky. It would free. It did all kinds of odd things. And it wasn't running off a battery. It was plugged right into the wall. There wasn't anything else around it. But the set of steps going up into that hallway was doing um, some weird, wacky tech stuff. 
And then the only other thing was when I was standing in the hallway, excuse me, it felt like something brushed across the back of my neck. Not like in a like not like in a bad way, just like in a weird, you know, like like it felt like either hair or cloth was going across the back of my neck. So that was pretty cool. And the guy that the guy that owns it, the guy that runs it, his name is Jay. So he was there, his wife, his daughters, they were all super cool people. Um, and we're, we're actually going to go back there in September to check it out again. Oh, that's pretty interesting. Yeah, mm -hmm. I like that. Yeah, that's cool. All right, let's see what's up next here. Let's see. Welcome, Josh. Welcome, Tim. All right, here. Let's see. Next slide. And I don't know what happened to it. What are y'all looking at? Anything? <laughs> Looks like a Facebook page. Yeah, I know. I'm seeing myself. <laughs> How beautiful I am. Let me stop sharing here and let me reset it. Uh, I love my new system, but I'm still getting used to it here. Uh, Tracy here. Let's see, Tracy. I'm glad I have anything inappropriate up. <laughs> you know, uh, like other yeah. people's discussions or anything like that. So, all right, here, in action. Let's see here. Okay, I got a video. Let me pause it and uh, rewind it here. And, uh, you know, I went with another system and I had to relearn it. So, here we go. And uh, all right, ladies and gentlemen, now we go. Here we go. If you want us to go downstairs and leave you in peace, can you make that ball go up? Can you give us a sign? Uh, yeah, I think that's Thank a good you. sign. So that that was the Samuel Morris Mansion up in Atlantic Highlands in North Jersey, across the bay from New Jersey, from New York. And what was funny was there was another room in there where I had a bunch of cat balls set up. And the whole night, um, I think we went there. I can't remember when we went there, but uh, there had been like a group that stayed the night before. And a week before that, there was a film crew in there and they were filming like a slasher movie in the mansion. So the house didn't feel oppressive or creepy or scary or uninviting. It, 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 it just kind of felt like a little awkward. You know, like when you walk into a room and you don't know anybody, you're welcome to right. stay. But it's kind of like, eh, I think I'm going to leave early. So we were in one other room where I had a bunch of cat balls set up. And I said to a few of the other members, I go. This doesn't seem like anything's happening here. I think I feel, and I said, I feel like I just want to pack my stuff up and go. And as soon as I said that, the cat balls went off. So again, I've been finding that a lot of these places, I feel bad for some of these ghosts or spirits or entities or however you want to call them or give them a title. You know, I think maybe they need a little bit of a break sometimes. I think they get burned out just like anything else. I, you know, they have to. I mean, can you imagine? sitting there and, and it's like us three you know go into a residence or a building it's like oh god here they come again <laughs> the same questions move yep. this touch that bang on this make i mean yeah it's got to get old right so yeah right. It's, i agree with that all right so let's see what's going on on the next one here and let me see if i can do this the right way gentlemen let me hit the right button here okay what is this one that's franklin county jail okay Oh, I guess I can turn the audio on. Yeah. I guess that was quick, huh? So again, that if you if you bring the audio from the beginning, you'll hear what I say. And you'd like to communicate. There's a ball on the mat. Oh yeah. I, yeah, I didn't even finish the statement and lit it up for us. So I guess there's a spirit down here who wishes to. So now let, let me make a uh, thing here. How's this ball laid? position explain that to it, me it, it's sitting in a mat that's on a bed of hay so i'm in and then again i'm in a room that's probably four by seven with like a six and a half foot high ceiling so basically like in a vault that was their solid that was their solitary confinement so even though i'm walking around i'm on a solid concrete slab right. i'm not stomping i'm not doing anything and again a, a cat ball simple nonsensical toy right it has right. to be physically Absolutely. touched for it to go off Absolutely. And plus, on top of that, it is cradled. That it, means yeah, no matter if you are jumping up and down, that's not right. going to affect that cat ball. Right. See, yeah, I like that you brought I, that out. That's a good point. Yes. And, and that was the cell room. That was the cell room where I got very overcome, very nauseous, th thinking I was going to throw up. And that's, again, 
the, that that cell room, the temperature had a significant uh, drop in it. Yeah, she just said temperatures dropping. Yeah. Let's see it go off. See if it'll go on again for us. And they're new capital, so they last a while. <laughs> right, right. We appreciate it. Is it possible you can make a noise? And that was it. So, you know, I kept my word. You didn't want to stand there. We left. All right. The steps. So this looks like a lighthouse, possibly. Now, or? Right. This is the Absecon Lighthouse in Atlantic City. And again, I didn't even notice this. So uh, a friend of mine, her name's Tori. She's up in Rhode Island. She and I love when I show pictures because I kind of feel stupid. Like, right. Right. When somebody else is looking at it, they point something else to you and you're supposed to be like the founder of the group or whatever. <laughs> but um, she goes, what's that mass on the step? And I'm like, what are you talking about? And we were sitting directly underneath it on, on, on that step that I was sitting directly underneath it. We got lots of communication and lots of activity with the dowsing rods. And what was weird is it, it, it literally felt while I was sitting there, it felt like something was trying to walk past me or brush by me. And I didn't, I didn't even think about it when I saw this picture. And then Tori said, what's that thing on the top of the step? And I'm like, what thing? And then I looked at it and I go, I couldn't tell you what that is because if you could see all the steps, you know, they're, they're, there's holes in them so you can see the light through it. But that one particular step, I have no idea what that is. Right here? Yeah. See, that, see like at the bottom a little bit further, it, it's all black right there. And then it gets, you know, it fades out. I don't know what that is because there's nothing on those steps. They don't have any storage on the steps. They don't have any anything on the steps. And that's that lighthouse is that lighthouse is the tallest one in New Jersey, third tallest in the country. It's a hundred and. 71 feet tall and oh, if anybody needs to get yeah, and if anybody needs to get their steps and it's i think 285 steps to the top oh that would that wear out your legs yeah which is fun because i always go to i always go to the top and set up a camera and a recorder and at the end of the night i always ask anybody anybody want to go up with me and get the uh you know the camera and the, and the recorder and this is after you've done those steps a couple of times and pretty much everybody's like nope it's all you <laughs> so if you if you look at that mass the, the darker you can see the the lighter brown around it, which you can tell is the floor, or you know, there's a lot of the lighter brown or brown all throughout the whole picture. But yeah, just looking at that mass, yeah, it looks like there is something there. And yeah, and I can't figure it out. And again, like when I looked at it the first time when I was going through pictures, I just looked at it real quick. But somebody brought it to my attention, so that's why I like to post stuff on Facebook and see what people have to say. And I, you know, show other people like, hey, what do you think of this picture? Are you seeing anything? Because I think you have to. You can't just have one set of eyes on it when you're reviewing evidence. Agreed. Agreed. So dousing rods, man, uh, you know, a lot of people still use those and you, you guys, you guys, do you frequently use those when you go there? Is that one of your, I, use them. I, I, I enjoy them. I use them. I seem to get lots of, uh, um, responses out of them. I think it's pretty cool. I, and again, I think I, I so with the dowsing rods, I kind of sat for a little bit, tried to do some, some thought about how they work, how they operate, you know, what's the deal going on. And, and at one uh, place out in Lancaster, Pennsylvania, um, we were at a place called Boobs Brewery, which is really cool. I don't think I sent you that picture, but I have a really good picture of an, another, I don't know what you want to call it, seated at a bar, which is cool. But we were down in the catacombs in the dungeon because that's where they used to store the beer in the underground caves because it's naturally cool. Now you can actually go down there. It's kind of like really cool. You know, you can go down in the catacombs and have dinner. But we were down there after the place was closed because we did an overnight stay there. And I had the dowsing rods. I'm seated in the table and I'm really still. And I'm watching the dowsing rods just tap, you know, in each hand. And I'm like, what could it be? And then it hit me. That's your heart rate. So we emit an electrical impulse, right? We're made of electricity. Our, our heart conducts with electricity. So and, and the, the dowsing rods are solid copper. So I'm sitting there holding them. I'm like, check that out. I'm monitoring my own heart rate, you know, with the with the with the dowsing rods just tapping back and forth. So that to me is another way uh, you get response from the dowsing rods. It might not be a ghost or or whatever. It's you doing it. So my theory with the dowsing rods is they're solid copper, right? So if you have a, a high um, level of ambient electricity, static electricity in in the air, they're going to respond to that because they're copper. The other thing is you yourself might be setting it off that way or 
I guess if you're in tune mentally, you know, like the amazing Kreskin, when they would bend the keys doing the telekinesis with the, the keys in their hands, you want those things to move so bad. It might not be a ghost. Or it might be actually you with your mind moving the dowsing rods. And then, you know, the, the next thing would be obviously something other than you or electricity is physically touching those rods for you. So. Dowsing rods are, are a neat instrument uh, outside of paranormal. Uh, we, we, I work in a, you know, a refinery setting and we had this older guy a couple of years ago come in to try to track a line because we couldn't find that line where, where it ended up at. We knew that there was some type of leak in the line. Right. And it's about a foot under, it's only like a foot underground. He used dowsing rods to track the energy and he found it. He found the other end of that line. I, I, I guess you could say dowsing rods are the original EMF detectors, right? Well, yeah. Right. Yeah, right. Unless, unless, you're look, unless you're looking for water, right? Yeah. yeah so. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> cool. So, um, the other gadgets, I don't know if we ever talked to you the last time you were on or not about SLS cameras. I, I don't use the SLS cameras, and I know probably I probably going to upset some of your viewers, but my opinion is, no. Nah, nah, you, you, you're not going to convince me that a stick figure on a screen having a grand mal seizure is, is an entity. I, I'm just not buying it. You know what I mean? And a lot of the stuff, see, that's why I, I like the capos. I like simple things. Like if you put a bell out there on a the table and you ask something to ring it and it rings it, what could it possibly be? But I think when you bring the tech stuff in, there's too many variables. There's too many false positive and too many things could set that thing off. And then again, how do you back that up? Like you can definitely videotape a, a, a cat ball or, um, you know, catching a disembodied voice or, you know, a bell or an object moving, Yeah. you know. You, you, I mean, how do you refute that or dispute that or prove that wrong? You really can't because something had to physically move it unless you got people rigging stuff up. But the electronic stuff, I just think there's too many um, variables. And they're like one, one of the members in my group, you know, she has a REM pod. She's got a spirit box and stuff. And sometimes we'll set that up. And I've had places like, and I hate to keep saying a thing, but Atlantic City Lighthouse. When we went into the oil house outside the lighthouse, um, and it was funny because one of our younger members, she says, why did they keep the oil outside? And I was like, I, I can't even have that discussion with you right now. But anyway, we're in the oil <laughs> house, right? Um, and I had to explain to her, yeah, back in like the early 1800s, there was no electricity to light that light. So some poor guy had to carry, you know, cans of oil up there and actually physically, you know, light the wick and all that other stuff. But in the oil house, we had the REM pod set up in the middle. We had EMF detectors set up in the middle and um, the spirit box on low, right? And then what did I do? I did a circle of cat balls all the way around that. What do you think was the only thing that we got responses on? The cat balls. So I can't explain that. And then I've actually had things where an EMF detector next to a REM pod is going off. One goes off, one doesn't. And usually it's the EMF detector goes off. And the ones that I have, they're not like the most expensive. They're not the greatest. They're like 50, 60 bucks EMF detectors. But they're the type that a real electrician would use when they're you know looking for wires. He muted himself. Tracy Who, muted. No, Tracy's <laughs> muted. I knew that. Just testing you. <laughs> you, were, you were testing us, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I no, can read lips. Trust me, Everybody's I can read lips. Uh, Everybody has different thoughts on those uh, on the SLS cameras. You know, we have people that swear by them, and we have people that uh, you know, like like Grizzly and I have discussed before. There are some circumstances where uh, they they might show something that that could potentially lead you to use other equipment. To, right. to prove that they're there but you're right with the cat ball i mean that's just like the one of the simplest things yeah that you and, and, and the other simple thing that i like to use where i don't think you could really um get too much of like a false positive on it is when you lay down that laser grid i mean something has to break those laser beams if it moves across it right yeah. right so I, I think things like that that are very simple and it you know you're not going to have many um things like outside forces to affect it to give you a false positive i think they're your truer things but again always with this stuff um it's common sense i mean you know i would much rather have an object move i'd much rather be touched i'd much rather you know see something manifest than you know the devices or whatever because i think if you get some hard concrete proof to me that's that that's better than you know just seeing stuff like that. And for anybody out there, before you send me hate like messages, if you use the SLA camera, I'm not judging. You know, whatever you use, whatever works for you, whatever you enjoy, more power to you.
I just people don't. People want to believe they capture right. things, right? They right. do. Well, that's and, like, bless their hearts. That's, that's the only thing no, I'm going to say. And I love that because I don't know if you know the comedian down south. His name is John Reap. And I watched him and he said, yeah, you know, down south, when they want to give you a backhanded compliment, they always end it with, bless his heart, right? <laughs> but whatever you use, whatever makes you happy, that's great. But like you just said, I think there's a large psychological component to paranormal investigating. And I know, like, for me and my group, we have different people in our group that are different things, um, religious beliefs, occult beliefs, whatever. That has to stay at the door. I don't allow anybody, including myself, to bring that into the investigation. Because I think once you bring that in now, the investigation or what you think you're gathering evidence or your um, foundation for the investigation is going to be slighted in one way or another. So you got You want to walk in there, a clean slate, like you don't know anything and just let things happen. It's got to be as organic as possible. And I think, again, um, and I hope this isn't insulting on anybody. I think if you go in there with the religious beliefs or cult beliefs or whatever, you know, that might be that might be insulting the spirits. Maybe they're not into. It. And if we're talking about things that are 17, 18, you know, 1600s, you know, you're coming and doing stuff like that. They might view you as scary or bad and not come out. Right. Right. Yeah. Right. Sure. Absolutely. Very true. Um, so one last thing I just want to ask you about was attachments. Yeah. Have I'm, you had anything attached to you or anybody in your group? No, nobody. Nothing's attached to anybody in our group. I kind of don't believe in the attachments. I have a house. I mean, if you could see the wall behind me, I mean, these are pictures I've done and stuff, but my house, everybody laughs. They say it's a museum. My house is like a cross between the Adams family and Tim Burton. Right. And I have tons of stuff in my house. I have tons of stuff in my house. And if it's okay, I plug myself. Any of your viewers out there, if you have haunted, possessed, whatever it is, items that you don't know what to do with, I'll take it. I'm more there than happy go, to take ladies it. Ladies and gentlemen, you, you heard it. From Send Marie. it to me. Send it to me. I'll take it. Because I have a house full of that stuff. And you know what's happened so far? Nothing. It, it's just added to my collection. I think the attachment thing, or when people think they, they have an attachment or something's around them, kind of like the whole theory of the poltergeist, right? So the poltergeist it might be somebody that's had traumatic experiences, horrible experiences, so they carry around all that negative energy. And then it manifests itself into the, 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 the area, right? So now you got a negative manifested energy doing whatever it wants to do. So I think the people that think they have attachments or the people that think they have things following the home, I don't think it's that. I think it's more like a subconscious thing where maybe these people are just making bad choices, bad decisions, and they're just having a streak of bad luck. But like we're all human, right? We don't want to take the blame or be authentic about it. We got to hang it on something. So now all of a sudden, dude, I was in this haunted house and this thing has followed me home because now I have all the bad luck in the world and things are just going wrong for me from since I did that investigation. As that, that's how I feel that, about it. My 75 inch monitor just turned on by itself. Thank you. There you go. Maybe that. it's your yeah. alien, maybe it's your new alien Bigfoot doll that you got. Yeah, right. They, they they've been talking about it during the whole show. They never did name the Bigfoot doll yet. Now I got the alien. Just then Tracy's been squirming in his chair during the whole show over it. So look at him. Yeah. <laughs> I think if I think if you believe in the possession or the attachment thing, I think it, it's up to the individual, right? If you don't want to have an attachment or a possession. I don't think it's going to happen. Just like when people <clears throat> do an investigation and they feel they need to be protected, like with a, a um, you know, um, with an obsidian stone or a crucifix or whatever it is they want. They, you know, they feel they're going to be protected. I, I try to explain to people, whatever it is that you have, it's not that item. It's you putting the belief and the energy and the power into that item. So if you think about it, you don't need that. If you don't want to be attached or possessed or whatever, then don't get attached or possessed. But I think some people maybe might be a little like, you know, Jungian thing going on with the shadow self and all, and subconsciously they actually want that to happen. So, I mean, I've actually gone into things, and I know people are going to hate me for saying this. I've actually gone into places like, yo, man, if you're bored of this place, you don't like it. I got nice accommodations. I live in a five-bedroom house all by myself. I got room. Come on with it. You Come know what on. I mean? Jump yeah. on the bandwagon. Come home. And, and I, can tell you some, I can tell you something neat. In my foyer, it's set up like a cool display, but I, I do have two carriages that were children's carriages from the 1800s. You know, a little girl would play with the carriages with her dolls. And of course, I have the creepy old, you know, dolls in the carriages. And then behind the <laughs> behind the carriages, I have like a doll that looks like that that character from the movie, um, The Ring, you know, with the long black hair covering her face. And she's just holding a carriage like she's the mom. 
So every once in a while, it is kind of weird. My dog will go to Mia and she'll walk from the living room into the foyer and I watch her and she just looks at the, the carriages with the dolls and her head goes to the side, you know? And then one time it's cool. She's staring at these things and her head's off to the side and her tail starts wagging. And I'm like, okay. And then she just comes back in the living room and nothing came of it. But I thought that was pretty cool. <laughs> That's it. Grizz has got a pack for you if you need it. He can see. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you know, you talk about crosses and crucifixes. I've got it everywhere. Yes. Uh, well, I, it, I'll tell you, may, maybe I got an in because I have a uh, great, 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 great uncle who's actually uh, going to be canonized by the Roman Catholic Church. So maybe he's around. I don't know. Unbelievable. But, you know. Mm. <laughs> uh, yeah, ladies and gentlemen, you heard Lou. If you got something that you say, uh, I'm, I'm serious. If you got something, send it to me. I'll, I'll take it. I'll take it off your hands because you know people believe that you can't burn it because it's going to release the energy. Um, you either have to sell it to somebody or somebody has to take it from you um, willingly, but not knowing all of that. I don't really care. Just give it to me. <laughs> I love it. Right. This, this is great. This is great. I love it. Tracy's like, don't send it to me. Mm -mm. <laughs> I don't need it. <laughs> yeah, don't send it. Don't send it to me by way of Tracy. Just send it directly to me. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> I'm just gonna send it to Grizz if I get it printed. Uh -uh. <laughs> uh, now, people, people tried that a few years ago. I was not down with that. No, no, thank not you. <laughs> Absolutely not. So, how do people find you and uh, get a hold of you and so forth? So it's, I don't have like a, a I don't have a web page and things like that. Again, I'm pretty low tech, whatever. I mean, I have the Facebook page. So it's Charon Paranormal. And uh, the email is Charon. Uh, it's Charon Paranormal PA at gmail dot com. C H A R O N guys. Right. Charon. Awesome. Yep. Yeah. And it, it is. Thank you for so much for uh, having the opportunity to come back, especially at short notice. I greatly Thanks. appreciate that. Uh, no problem. Ladies, I enjoy it. Yeah. I think you guys are awesome. I think I think your cast is awesome, and you two guys individually are pretty cool. But when you put you two together, it's it's pretty cool. Where it's more cool, or however you want to say it. So thank you. <laughs> yeah, we greatly appreciate that, and ladies and gentlemen. Tonight, nine o'clock, we've got Bigfoot encounters from Ohio. We've got pictures. We've got video. However, we have this town in Ohio. That's being, I don't know what you call, victimized, traumatized by some creature. And we've got it, the audio on video and uh, audio is captured. It, it's crazy. So tune in at nine o'clock, ladies and gentlemen, and listen to the witnesses' testimonial in the uh, evidence that we're going to present. So, Godspeed. We'll see you here shortly. Bye bye.